I just got back from Summer Game Fest, Xbox Showcase, Ubisoft Forward, E3 slash 93 week, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> but I did try a bunch of games, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the most accessible ones I played at Summer Game Fest. I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and I play video games. To find out how, click here, or click the link in the description down below. Also, while you're down there, click the like and subscribe buttons. It would really help keep this channel growing. So, yes, I was there for all of the gaming goodness that we saw recently from Jeff Keighley to Xbox to Ubisoft. So, in this video, I am going to highlight what I played and what accessibility I was able to see or figure out based on those demos. You ever come across a game that delightfully surprised you, that it puts a smile on your face whenever you talk about it? Y'all, for me, that's honestly Disney's Illusion Island. Coming out on the Nintendo Switch on July 28th, this is a four-player co-op where you play as either Mickey, Minnie, Donald, or Goofy in what I'm calling a kid's first Metroidvania. You're unlocking areas while platforming your way across large maps. If you're a Disney file, there is also a ton of lore and history that the developers at Dallas Studios added that you get to unlock by finding items across the maps that go as far back as Mickey's first appearance in Steamboat Willie all throughout Mickey and Friends 100 year history. What's also interesting in regards to the gameplay is that there is zero combat. Now, okay, all right, I know what you're asking. How can there be zero combat if it's a Metroidvania? Aren't there bosses? And my answer is yes, but you know, hey, let me talk first. <laughs> there are dangers in the world that you are platforming around to get past. So you don't need to worry about combat in that way, like having to line up a jump to be able to knock someone on the head or use any weapons to take out some of the hazards. And when it comes to boss battles, how you defeat them is that instead of hitting the boss directly, you're doing platforming challenges to damage the boss. As you go through each phase, the platforming becomes more challenging. But what I also love about the game are the amount of customization options and assists that will help a lot of disabled players. You can choose between having from one to three hearts to add to the difficulty, or select an infinite stone heart where you don't get hurt at all. It's an infinite lives heart. And if you're in co-op, this doesn't affect anyone else gameplay. If one chooses one heart and you choose infinite, it doesn't change anything about the game at all. There are also a lot of assists to help disabled players too, such as jump assist, a boost jump assist that will, when you hit a double jump, if you hit a bit too early or too late, it will ignore the timing and let you jump at the right time. There's a wall cling assist where when you jump onto a wall, the default is that you'll slide down the wall, which can be dangerous if you're avoiding hazards on that wall. But with wall cling assist, you stay in place and don't slide. There are also actions you can do in the game, such as hug another player to share health, which is really kind of sweet and cute. Um, or if you're, hey, if you're stuck and another player got ahead of you, the player can drop down a rope to let the player who is stuck to climb up. And there's even help with that too. You can set the hug and or the rope to a toggle or a hold action. And you can also have the player auto climb that same rope in the rope climb assist. You can adjust subtitle background, size, opacity, text color, and speed. Now, lastly, there is no control remapping. However, you can totally play this with only one Joy-Con as the game is designed for multiple players playing together. So if you are able to use one Joy-Con, you're all set. And I know this seems to be more designed for kids to play at any age, but a lot of these will help disabled players jump into Mickey and Friends world. And honestly, that's fantastic. Also, the devs are super great and are really excited for disabled players to play this game and will be looking for feedback as you pick this up. Make sure to tag Dollar Studios as well. Another Crab's Treasure is a game you potentially could dismiss based on me telling you it's described as a Souls-like crab adventure, but trust me, this one is worthy to check out for disabled players next year. And now it's coming to Game Pass in 2024. Another Crab's Treasure has you play as a crab named Krill, who has his shell stolen and you have to get it back. But along the way, you can pick up items to use as your shell that also acts as your shield and sometimes weapon. Items like pop cans, bottle caps, and more are littered throughout the seascape. But you have to be careful as those new shells don't last. So you'll be constantly finding new weapons and shells to 
to fight enemies and bosses. Now, yes, you'll be fighting tough bosses that will require you to block, parry, and dodge away from their attacks, but what's amazing about this game is that there are assist modes to help you play the game. I can't show you how they play because I wasn't able to capture footage, but they did allow me to take a photo of the assist screen that includes options like giving you extra shell durability, reduced damage taken, lower enemy health, extra dodge invincibility, extra parry window, prevent item loss on death, prevent pitfall damage, and even slow down the game speed. But if that's not enough, this is honestly my favorite option that made me laugh so hard at how wacky and weird it is that I couldn't believe it was actually Actually considered as an accessibility option but there is an option called give krill a gun and when enabled your shell is now exactly how you think it is it's a handgun with your butt stuck in the magazine and when you aim and fire the gun it does a ton of damage I tried a boss fight with the assist options off and yeah it was tough and I couldn't really beat it after a few tries I did get close however when I gave Krill a gun, I killed the boss in three shots so fast that the game didn't even have time to put up the boss's health bar. The fight was over. That's how fast it was and how much damage it did. I'm serious. This is one I'm really looking forward to, and it being on Game Pass is a no-brainer to try. I love it. Another game I wanted to give a shout out to, which you can play the demo of right now on Steam Next Fest, is Viewfinder. It's an amazingly beautiful game where you find photos throughout each level and you use them to solve puzzles by holding up the photos and placing them in areas which will then let you go and walk into the photo itself. There's like everything from kids drawings, paintings, photocopies of photos you can pick up and each look amazingly detailed as you go through them. And there are items in those photos that will help you solve puzzles throughout each level. There are actually even some accessibility options available as well, like adjusting font size, setting your aim to a toggle instead of a hold, having a more readable font or even a dyslexic font, a photo sensitivity mode, changing the crosshair size, shape and opacity, and remapping the controls, at, you know, at least on PC, which is how I played it. I think for a lot of disabled players, this game would be a great cozy chill puzzle game. So maybe Make sure to download the demo and give it a try for yourself to see if it fits your accessibility needs. All right, so now let's move on to Ubisoft. They had two titles I got to play and check out for accessibility, and that's Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and The Crew Motorfest. All right, first let's talk Prince of Persia. This game looks and plays incredibly well. It's a mix of the old style of the PC days of Prince of Persia mixed with a new modern look and gameplay. Now, during my play time with the game, I unfortunately had the settings menu locked, so I couldn't see or capture what was going to be available, but Ubisoft did post an accessibility spotlight of the game where the team talked about what they had coming up with more announcements to come. I'll talk about what specifically they have in a minute for accessibility, but I will talk about what I noticed while playing the game as is without adjusting settings. The two modes of gameplay are basic combat and traversal slash navigation. It's very much a Metroidvania with a mix of like dead cells and the style of combat and navigation. The combat takes a bit to get used to, but there are interesting animations and visualizations as well as audio cues built in to let a player know an attack is coming, which will allow you to either dodge, parry, or attack before they do. The navigation to get past the hazards as you platform your way through the maps will be challenging for blind players, but overall, they are fun to play. Now, in regards to what they announced, I'm really actually excited to see more as they have some great features for navigation, such as a cool feature called Eye of the Wanderer, which will allow you to, to take screenshots of the area you are in and pin them to the map so you know where things are based on those screenshots. There's also a guided mode that has optional icons Icons, marking objectives for available or blocked pass. There are also multiple difficulty options, including the ability to customize those difficulty presets further by adjusting enemy damage and health, as well as parry timing and special attack at deplete rate, which will be helpful as there are special attacks throughout the entire game and they will come in handy when you're trying to take down a tough enemy. 
Also, the font across the whole game is very readable and large. Now, granted, this is also designed for the Nintendo Switch, so it'll work in handheld mode as well as docked, and because it's also coming out to PC, the same font size will be carried over to the PC version as well. It basically looks like they did what they did for Immortals Phoenix Rising, which was they basically designed the game from the Nintendo Switch up, which is really great to see. Lastly, let's talk about the crew motor fest. I did get to play this at the Ubisoft Forward event and also got to see of all of what will be in the game in terms of accessibility. And honestly, it actually is very similar to what the Forza Horizon series has in terms of gameplay and what Forza Horizon 5 has in terms of accessibility. There are quite a few assists for driving and steering and the ability to adjust the AI level of difficulty, plus you could turn on the options to have a nitro boost or even the same rewind feature that the Forza series has had. I didn't get a lot of time to play around with every setting, but I mostly tried out the braking and drive assists while also trying to see their limitations. Overall, with those assists on, it does a good job of forcing you onto the driving lane. Just slightly turning left or right will auto adjust to get you back on that line. But if you do steer off sharply, like if you're trying to avoid a collision with other drivers, you are kind of on your own to try to get back close to that line to where the auto steering will then grab you and bring you back to the center of that lane. But on the braking side, when you are on the track and are making turns, the auto braking does work really well. You can basically just hold down accelerate and the braking will happen automatically for you. It helped a lot, especially when you're not sure when to brake going into a turn. I have to admit and be honest, I don't know if it'll have the same accessibility as Forza Motorsport that'll be coming out relatively close to this game's release as well, especially when it comes to the blind drive assist that Xbox has already talked about when it comes to Forza Motorsport. Obviously a blind drive assist won't be in the crew, but it will be a good alternative if you're a fan of another Horizon-like arcade racing game, but from a very accessible Ubisoft. All right, now that is all for this video. I Overall, the games I saw and the devs I met were really Really amazing and even the ones that didn't weren't able to talk about accessibility they were really great to talk to and answer as many questions as I could uh, and some e like even knew me from either this channel or from my accessibility work so it was really great to see the passion they have for accessibility even at previews like this I would love to see more events and demos at these events that showcase accessibility because it already is a huge topic of conversation and knowing what is going to be coming for accessibility early on gets disabled players as part of the hype of for the games that they are announcing and get to enjoy this E3 slash non E3 week. I do have to shout out Ubisoft in that regard because they actually had an article for Prince of Persia ready to go talking about the accessibility of that title as soon as they showed it in the Ubisoft Forward. I love to see more developers do that. Go into more deeper dives with accessibility even if you can't talk about everything, even a little bit really helps. Or even, hey, Xbox, let's add more accessibility info in the showcase extended. You've got a great platform for that. And honestly, I really love what you showed off and when you talked about and mentioned accessibility for the new hi-fi rush update so more of that please <laughs> more of that please more of that my girl <laughs> let's make these events more hype for disabled players too Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about any of the games I mentioned, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer based on my play experience. Also, while you're down there, could you do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons? It would really help keep this channel growing so I can do more cool stuff in the future. Thanks again. And as always, I remain obediently yours. Bye-bye.